the good, the bad, and the ugly. This title of the famous Clint Eastwood movie would also make a great title for this week's Parsha, Parsha Naso. During the Parsha, we are introduced to a very colorful and varied group of, of individuals. We meet the thief, the adulteress, the leper, the Kohen, and the Nazir. In my opinion, the most interesting and mysterious of all these figures is that of the Nazir, and, and about the Nazir we'll, we'll speak about today. The Torah introduces the, the Nazir with, by saying, Ki yafli. yafli is to go beyond. A person wants to go beyond the regular boundaries in order, and he does that by becoming a Nazir. And by that he achieves a special status of holiness and closeness to God. There are three basic laws of the Nazir. Number one, he's forbidden to come in contact with the dead. Number two, he is forbidden to drink wine. And number three, he must let his hair grow long and wild. By comparing and contrasting the Nazir to the Kohen, we, we could um, unravel the person, unique personality of the Nazir. In some ways, the Nazir is like the Kohen. Not just that both of them are seeking holiness, but both of them, the, the, the being drawn close to holiness is expressed by the need to distance themselves from death. In fact, a Nazir is like the Kohen Gadol in that, as opposed to a regular Kohen, he's not even allowed to take part in the burial of family members, and just like a Kohen Gadol, only for a met mitzvah, a body which no one else to take care of, is he allowed to contaminate himself, otherwise he stays away from death. However, in addition to this similarity, there's a difference. The Kohen must be, very, must be clean cut. He can't let his hair be wild, whereas the Nazir must have his hair growing wild. And I think this is the key to the personality of the Nazir. A Kohen is born to be a Kohen. There's a set order of life that he follows. The Nazir chooses to go beyond, go beyond the natural boundaries of his society to seek something beyond, and, in that, and that's represented by his long hair uncut. Even, to now, even nowadays, the youth reflect the rebellion against the previous generation by letting their hair grow long. And this might also explain the, juxtapos the, the juxtaposition of the Nazir to the adulteress. She too must let part of the ceremony uh, which is part of her punishment, her hair is made to um, um, be unkempt and wild, and I think this is reflecting the same idea. Both the Nazir and the adulteress have gone beyond the regular boundaries of society. The Nazir for good, and the adulteress for evil. And relating to going beyond the natural boundaries, I think the most famous Nazir, Shimshon, is a good example of this. Shimshon certainly is a very unconventional figure. In fact, he's so much of a loner that at a, at a point, the um, Amisrael tried to give him over to the Plishtim because they're concerned that he's going to create so much trouble for them. Um, so we have the Nazir, the fully developed and known personality of the Nazir as somebody who goes beyond normal conventions and hopefully always for the best. But in this light we can understand the third law of the Nazir. Why is it that they are forbidden to drink wine? Because wine, for, for, somebody go, for someone going beyond the regular boundaries, combining that with wine could be a deadly combination. Be, um, 
society's conventions might keep you small, but also keeps you safe in many ways. Going beyond, you're in danger, and that's what the 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 um the the that's why it's forbidden for the nazir to drink wine. In fact, Shimshon himself was has been criticized within Chazal for, among other things, for relations with non-Jewish women, which um, which express the dangers of going out of society. And in general, to understand the different fi figures we meet in this parsha, it could help a game I used to play as a child called Dungeons and Dragons. In Dungeons and Dragons, the world is divided into four. There's good and there's evil. But both the good and the evil are, are broken up into lawful good and chaotic good. Lawful evil and chaotic evil. There's the world of order. The good guys, the Kohanim, represent holiness based on order. And maybe the thieves at the beginning of the parsha are, if you think of white collar crime, are classical bad guys. Whereas the Nazir and the, and the adulteress, both of them, the wild here showed them as chaotic figures, breaking out of the normal conventions of society. The Nazir for the good, chaotic good, and the adulteress for the worse, chaotic evil. And there's, there's a beautiful story in the Gemara about one Nazir that the that's prefaced by Shimon HaTzadik, the coin gadol in the time of Alexander the Great, as, as saying that he ha has misgivings about the inst institution of Nazirut. However, he says, there's one Nazir that he was happy to participate in his process. And he, Shimon HaTzadik tells the story of a Nazir with beautiful hair, and coming at the end of his term of Nazirut, in which Nazir brings an offering and shaves off all his hair and burns it. And Shimon HaTzedek asks him, why did he become a Nazir, since ultimately this has now led to your shearing off of all your beautiful hair? And the Nazir said, because once upon a time I looked into a pool of water and I saw my reflection and I saw how beautiful I look, and I felt my evil inclination getting the better of me. So I decided to declare a vow of Nazirut to help me overcome this evil inclination. We clearly have a Jewish response to, this, to the Greek story of Narcissus, in which um, he looks into the water, the water, falls in love with his own reflection, and ultimately dies of starvation. Be it as it may, Shimon HaTzadik kisses this Nazir and says, May there be many Nazirim like you. And about you, the verse has said, Ki afli lindor neder Nazir lazir lashem. Um, to go beyond, a person goes beyond to take a vow of Nazirut to God. And one unanswered question in the story is why is it that in general Shimon HaTzadik has misgivings about the institution of Nizirut? One approach is that he was concerned ab about, he felt that if God gave the blessing to enjoy wine, to, to abstain from wine is, is not appropriate. However, I would like to offer a different interpretation and based on the following story. They say that in the town where Rav, Rav Naftali Rupshitz lived, there was an individual that would fast the entire week from Shabbat to Shabbat. And Rav Naftali was sus suspected the motivations of this individual. And one day, when he saw a child accidentally bump into this person, Rav Naftali found a way to test the sincerity of this faster. And Rav Tully scolds the child and says, How dare you bump into a person who fasts every Monday and Thursday? And 
the person exposed his true motivations as being based on ego and not God when he angrily said, what do you mean I fast only Mondays and Thursdays? I fast the entire week from Sunday through Friday. And if you go back to the Pasuk of Shimon of Tzaddik, he says about you, it is appropriate that the verse that says a man who goes beyond, or a person, because a woman could also become a Nazir, a person that goes beyond to vow Nizirut to God. I think the point being is that Shimon of Tzaddik realized that this person's motivations of going beyond were pure, were for the sake of God, which unfortunately is not always so. Shabbat Shalom.